Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today it's time for the Flicks of the Week, where I'm going to give you two picks from every major streaming service, as well as two picks for rentals this week, and my pick of the week for the theater. On Netflix this week, I recommend Traitor, starring Don Cheadle. Now this is a really cool little movie about a domestic terrorist. Uh, it's a good sort of uh, uh, crime thriller type of a thing. It really got overlooked when it came out because it butted up right against uh, an actual terrorist attack. Not a major one, but it, it really it was not the type of thing people wanted to go see. And it really is good. Like it, it's got a. It doesn't go where you think it's going to go. Uh, Guy Pierce has a really good role in it as, as one of the uh, agents investigating and trying to hunt down this domestic terrorist. It's a role you wouldn't expect to see Don Cheadle in, but it's a, a CIA manhunt type of a thing, uh, and it really is a good example of that genre. It's just one of those ones that because of a weird set of circumstances people missed, which is why I'm excited to be able to recommend it, because I know because it's not a super popular movie, Netflix is going to bury it, but it is a solid one that a lot of people will be able to pick up and be surprised they never watched. One on Netflix that I will recommend lightly is A Blue Valentine. Now I say lightly, it is a good movie, I do like it, I do recommend it, but it is heavy. It's about a couple, it basically chronicles a couple's relationship as they like meet, fall in love, uh, and then struggle with the, the prospect of divorce. Uh, and they have kids and it really is pretty heart-wrenching. So watch it when you're in the right mood and it is not for everyone. If you really can't stand things like that, then don't watch this movie. But really, really incredible performance by Ryan Gosling, an actor who I really like a lot, but who often uh, plays a very quiet role, like a role where he really doesn't talk too much. He really does that fantastically. He's very, very vocal in this movie. It's a very, very different kind of Ryan Gosling. Uh, he's balding, he's fat, but he, he does it very, very well. Uh, Michelle Williams does a great performance, but Gosling really stands out. This is a great little indie movie. Uh, the same director as uh, The Place Beyond the Pines, which I happen to like more, but this is a really just beautifully done little portrait of a relationship. Really, really fantastic film. Like I said, just make sure you're in the right frame of mind when you watch this one. On Amazon, I recommended this last week uh, when I just basically told you about all the best things coming this month. But Mulholland Drive, I want to recommend it again just because not everyone watches every video. This is easily, maybe not easily, but for me, it's David Lynch's best film. Uh, I like David Lynch. If you don't like David Lynch, you probably don't like this. If you don't know whether or not you like David Lynch, uh, Mulholland Drive is very complex, but is probably a good place to start. If you like it, but feel like you didn't quite get it, you probably like David Lynch. You need to explore this one and his other work more. This one is a puzzle that needs to be solved, and it doesn't seem like that type of movie to start. As you're watching it, there's weird cheesy acting elements, there's just some bizarreness that doesn't seem to go anywhere, and then some of the pieces start to fit together as you watch the movie. After multiple viewings, more and more of the pieces start to fit together. But even on the first pass, I feel like what it reveals to you is really pretty stunning in a really pretty stunning manner. I, I would say with this one, as complex as this movie is, it's not one to watch passively. Meaning don't put it on and just sort of watch it while you're eating or while you're doing something else or um, watch it on your phone or something. Watch this one when you can turn the lights out and give it some attention and let me know what you think about it. Come back, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Very, very curious on this one to know if I'm overreaching and recommending one that is not really accessible for people. It's been a while since I've recommended a good horror movie. Uh, there's a movie called Late Phases on Amazon Prime right now. It's a werewolf movie. It's a good werewolf movie. It's a very small movie, but a good one. And there are not a lot of good werewolf movies. There's certainly not enough for me to do a full top 10 list, but this one would certainly be on that list. It's about a guy who's older in life, 
lives in a retirement home. It's a werewolf movie, I don't wanna to give too much away, but it does a good job of sort of like juxtaposing the transformation, the werewolf sort of transformation with the, uh, the, the late in life sort of transformation that one has to go through. Uh, but it is very, very low budget. But if you're in the mood for a low budget horror movie that's really not necessarily a cheesy horror movie, even though there are comedic elements, this is a great place to go. Uh, I uh, know a lot of people haven't seen it. If you can't stand low budget stuff, just completely stay away from late phases. If you like content like this, definitely click that subscribe button and be sure to click the little bell icon because it's the only way you're really going to be sure you get notified when I put a new video out. And I put a new one out just like this one at least three times a week so my subscribers never run out of good movies to watch. Hulu, is, someone there must watch this channel because I have bitched about Hulu not having anything good to watch and they have overcorrected. There were too many things for me to pick this week, had a hard time narrowing it down, which means next week we'll have some good Hulu recommendations as well. But Bound is a really cool little movie in a couple of ways. One, it stars Jennifer Tilly and Gina Gershon. Uh, they have this really steamy uh, lesbian relationship in it. Smoking hot sex scene between the two of them, which you do not get. You do not get a lot, but that's not the reason to watch this one. This one is a really cool little crime movie where basically they decide to screw over uh, the mob, um, and it's just it's just a riveting movie to watch. And the really cool thing about it is that the only reason this movie exists is because when the Wachowskis uh, wrote The Matrix, they insisted that they direct it. The studio, it was a big, big budget movie, and the studio knew it was going to be a big money maker, and they knew they could, they could do it right, but they didn't know if the Wachowskis could direct it right. So they gave them one million dollars and said, here's, here's a million dollars, we will let you direct The Matrix if you do a good job with this. Go make something. This is the movie that they made. I can't recommend this one enough, especially when you understand the circumstances around how it was made. And then easily the best mockumentary ever made, this is Spinal Tap. If you've never seen it, you must watch this one before it's gone. It's one of my favorite comedy movies of all time. It's one of the best movies about a band of all time, and it easily is the best mockumentary of all time. It essentially, it's not the first, but it essentially created the template for that genre. It really perfected it, and it's been replicated a bunch by, by none less than Christopher Guest, who stars in the movie. He went on to direct his own string of movies like Best in Show. All, all of his movies are great too, but nothing beats Spinal Tap. It's got so many hilarious elements in it, so many funny scenes. If you're into to, that 80s, 70s rock at all, you're going to love this movie, I guarantee it. And this week on the podcast, I'm actually talking about how Johnny Depp is blowing all of his money. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go subscribe to that channel. But because Johnny Depp is blowing all of his money on HBO, I'm recommending you watch Blow, starring Johnny Depp. Really great little drug movie. Cool, like, a lot of people have seen this one, but it's very much like a Scarface kind of a thing. Like, he's a very different type of character, but it's that sort of rise to power, uh, epic type of a story about a cocaine dealer. Really fun stuff, really exciting, interesting stuff. It's got kind of a Goodfellas thing going on with it a little bit. Uh, is it as good as... Scarface or Goodfellas? Not quite, but it's close. It's in that same vein and, and well worth watching if you're into that genre whatsoever. And then Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was really one of my favorite movies the year it came out. Really fun and innovative uh, style to it. Uh, I just couldn't get enough of it. I watched it a bunch. The editing's great. The special effects are really cool. It's really unlike anything else you'll watch. If you like what you're seeing in the clips, you should definitely check it out. However, I'm willing to bet this is one of those movies that most people who would be interested in it have seen it. If for some reason you passed on it and you have any sort of affection for uh, uh, video game pop culture, 80s, 90s video games, you, you owe it to yourself to watch Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. You will love it. 
on rentals this week, A Quiet Place comes out. It's one of the best movies of the year so far. Certainly the best horror movie of the year so far. Really, really fantastic. It stars John Krasinski and his wife, Emily Blunt. They're married in the movie. They're married in real life. It also happens to be the first film that uh, John Krasinski, who you know is Jim from The Office, uh, has directed. And he really did a fantastic job with it. So I was interested in it just for that purpose. But then it actually delivers. It really delivers on what the trailers promise. It's a really fantastic little, little thriller horror movie. Very much in the vein of like Signs. Movies like that, if you like that genre, this one is cream of the crop. And then for one that a lot of people haven't seen that's a little bit older, uh, is, is just a beautiful movie called Sunshine, and it's about a space exploration trip to the sun. Not to walk around on the sun, but essentially to launch a, a, a weapon into the sun to help reignite it because it's fading. It's starting to die out. The thing that's cool about this one is it feels very real for most of the movie. It feels almost like it actually is it, like it actually took place, very much like the way Apollo 13, the way that movie felt. That's very much the way this movie sort of felt to me. Everything feels very realistic up until a certain point. Then the movie sort of jumps into the fantastical, but it does so in a good way. Like it it really it, it does it very well. This is directed by Danny Boyle, who in my opinion really kills it in any genre he's taken over. He's proven that with Train Spotting being one of the best drug movies ever, and with 28 Days Later being one of the best zombie movies ever. Sunshine is one of, not the best, but it is one of the best like realistic uh, space exploration movies you can watch. I highly recommend it. It's an older movie. It's about 10 years old, but it's well worth hunting down and renting. This week in the theater, Skyscraper starring The Rock comes out but it's not my recommendation. That movie does not appear to be very self-aware. I could be wrong. It looks like it's just got really far-fetched elements to it, which I'm fine with, but if the movie's not self-aware and it's just creating a spectacle to sell tickets, I'm not into it. That's unfortunately what it looks like, but there's a smaller movie called Sorry to Bother You that looks really, really cool. Uh, it's basically about a telemarketer but then it goes into this crazy direction. It's got all sorts of stuff going on in it. The trailer is actually difficult to sort of pin down and explain what's going on, but it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like it's got its own flavor, its own vibe. So I will be checking that one out in the theater. Let me know what you plan on watching this week in the comments below, but I will keep making episodes like this as long as you keep watching them. But thanks for watching this episode, and you will see me next time.